Alrighty, so as I said, we theoretically covered synthetic division, but it was a pretty, uh, pretty rushed presentation because we only had a few minutes at the end of class. So I think it would be good because we are going to be using this material later. It might be good to take a second and less friendly look at this division. So let's state our goal to divide one polynomial by another. But we're looking at this goal in a very limited way. First of all, that other polynomial is always going to be of the form x minus a. So it's always going to be by, by this very simple first degree polynomial. Also, We're only going to do this when the polynomials in question divide into each other evenly. So we're not going to have any remainder terms or anything like that. And when we have this as our goal, we have as a tool. Can you go back, please? I can, yes. No problem. You ready? We have as a tool to accomplish that goal, something called synthetic division. So synthetic division, as I say, is a tool for dividing one polynomial by another. And we saw this yesterday, albeit in a kind of hurried fashion. But the basics of synthetic division are that we take that number A, we write a vertical bar, we write a horizontal bar. Over here, we write the coefficients of P of X. And we do with a synthetic division, and we're going to get numbers down here. And these numbers down here are also going to be coefficients. They are going to be the coefficients of the quotient. That is to say, P of X divided by X minus A equals something. It equals 
some polynomial. When I say the coefficients of the quotient, I mean the coefficients of that polynomial. Let's remind ourselves or experience for the first time, if we weren't here yesterday, how synthetic division works. And we'll demonstrate this via example. X to the fourth minus seven X cubed plus 13 X squared, a significantly longer polynomial than that example I did yesterday. But this polynomial divided by X minus three. And if I've done everything correctly and copied my example correctly, this division should happen evenly. We should be able to just do synthetic division and get a polynomial back again. And before we do the division, <laughs> Let me state a fact about this polynomial Q of X. So we see that the polynomial we're starting with is a fourth degree polynomial. The division always reduces the degree of the polynomial by one. So if we're starting with a fourth degree polynomial, we do this division, we're going to get a third degree polynomial. Any questions before I actually do the synthetic division? If not, let me actually do the synthetic division. And let's remind ourselves of how this works. This number we are subtracting goes in the upper left. And now, In this region here, we're going to write down the coefficients of the polynomial. So that's a race. I don't know why it sometimes does that. Sorry, minor technical issues. Um, So that's a one X to the four. That's a negative seven X cubed. That's a 13 X squared. That's a negative four X. And that is a three. And synthetic division, getting kind of crowded here, but step one is a dropping down step. Whatever number we have written first, just comes right down. 
So that one comes down. And then synthetic division is sort of the same two steps repeated over and over again. And this is very, I mean, I don't know how well anyone really retains long division. It seems to me that it's something you learn when you're a child and then never use again. But you might recall that division is the same few steps repeated over and over again. Divide, multiply, bring down, subtract. Those are the steps of long division, and you just keep doing them until long division is done. So it's pretty, pretty par for the course to have a process like this, where the same few steps are repeated over and over. And the steps in question are multiplication. We multiply this number up here by what we have down here. We copy the result of that multiplication up there. And then we perform addition. And in general, you wouldn't write all of those arrows. You wouldn't write that plus sign. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page as far as where these numbers are coming from. And then, as I said, we just keep doing this. Multiplication, addition. Multiplication, negative four times three is negative 12. Addition, 13 and question. Um, how'd you get the negative of uh, four on the bottom? Oh, negative. Um, negative seven plus three is negative four. Multiplication, addition, three and negative four is negative one. Multiplication, addition. And once you, once you reach this last number, you see there's nothing to the right of this three and negative three, you're done. And now you can check your work. Um, this, ha this process has a sort of inbuilt way of checking your work. I already said this, but we're only doing this division in cases where one polynomial evenly divides another. And that should be reflected by a zero. That zero term is a remainder term. What remains is to interpret our answer. I mean, our goal here was to get a third degree polynomial. It was not to get a list of numbers. 
numbers. So somehow this, this list of numbers here, not counting the remainder, need to be giving us a polynomial. And the way they're doing that is that these are the coefficients of a third degree polynomial. So we start with our x cubed term, one x cubed, and then we count down minus four x squared plus one x minus one. And this is our answer. I mean, this is Q of X. The very natural question of what all of this is good for, we will defer for tomorrow. I mean, as I say, this is a sort of essential studies class. We're trying not to do a lot of pure math. So presumably we have some kind of application in mind for all of this. As I say, that we'll put off for the day. We just want to make sure we can do this division. And there's one kind of trick that we should talk about. But before we talk about tricks, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, so when you did the first polynomial, you pulled the... Um the signs with it. So you made the ones that were negative, negative. So right. why didn't you do that to the second polynomial? To the second... So it's x minus three. Why isn't that a negative three on the division then? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, so this... x minus three... This three is actually a root. I mean, we'll come to this later, but this three is a root of that top polynomial. And the actual form of this chart is that the root goes there. So because the root is positive three, we didn't have the negative sign. And that directly feeds in to what I want to do next, which is I want to do this division. when we have x plus one down here. And the trick, as it were, well, ultimately the trick is that the root here is negative one, but we haven't really talked about roots that might not be obvious at this point. So what you can do is you can think of addition in terms of subtraction. X plus one is the same as X minus negative one. And then once you have that subtraction, we can approach this in the same way that we approached this problem here. The number where subtracting goes in front of the bar up here, go the coefficients. 
um, including, as you observed, any negative signs. And then we do the synthetic division. And synthetic division, once you sort of, once you get the pattern down, is extremely quick. That's the reason I'm showing you this instead, or it's a reason I'm showing you this instead of polynomial with long division. Um, you obviously can't use synthetic division in every case. You see, we have these conditions for synthetic division. But this is the only type of division we're interested in in this class. So it makes more sense to me to just teach the quick version. Having said that, this is like the third synthetic division we have seen. So maybe it doesn't make sense to just jump through the example in three seconds. Let's go through the process step by step. One comes down. You multiply those terms and you get the negative one. Three plus negative one is two. You multiply those terms, you get negative two. One plus negative two is negative one. Negative one times negative one is positive one. We get that to zero. We're always hoping to see that zero at the end. If we don't get it, then something has presumably gone wrong. And now it's a matter of interpreting our result. I mean, we've got these numbers down here, but we're not looking for a list of numbers. We're looking for a polynomial. <clears throat> so you have to think in terms of degree. We started with a third degree of polynomial. The synthetic division always reduces the degree by one. So from third degree down to second degree. And then these numbers are the coefficients of the second degree polynomial. Not that zero, that zero is special. It's something else. The zero is the remainder. But the one and the two and the negative one give us the coefficients of this quotient. Okay, now that we've maybe repeated uh, our lesson from yesterday at a somewhat uh, more manageable pace. Does anybody have any questions about this division process? The in-class work is not going to be very exciting. And if you've gotten this process down, it uh, might not be very long. I just want you to practice synthetic division.
before we start using it on um, on Wednesday.